Welcome to 5-5 five, five Notes. We're going to be solving multi-step equations. Multi-step. No more just two-step. That means we're going to have lots of steps. I can't even count how many steps we're going to have. And we're also going to have some inequalities. And of course we treat inequalities just like equations except um, if we multiply or divide by a negative. That's the one exception. When we multiply or divide by a negative, sirens go off, alarms go off, and we have to remember to flip our inequality sign. I've uh, attempted to be an artist and draw y'all a little elephant. It is not an Alabama joke. I want you to be able to tell me when I ask you in class, how do you eat an elephant? And here's the answer to that question. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. One bite at a time. And that's also how you tackle multi-step equations. One step or one bite at a time. So let's look at this first equation. See how there's an equal sign here. We need to first take care of our parentheses by distributing our 5. 5 times h minus that minus came from the sign between the h and the 2 now i'm going to say 5 times 2 which is 10 equals 15. To, now this right here is just two steps left we're going to have to add 10 to both sides to isolate our h 5h equals 25. now we're ready to divide by 5 and it's an equation so we don't have to worry about whether it was positive or negative That'll cancel h equals 5. At least I think it is. I'm going to go back and I'm going to check to make sure. So in place of the h, I'm going to plug in 5 and check to see if that equals 15. So that's going to be 5 times 3. And 5 times 3 is 15. So it does check out. So I can put a box confidently around h equals 5. All right, the next problem is an inequality where we have this symbol in between. We treat it just like an equation until the very end. It's the only time we have to worry about the fact that it was an inequality. So again, one byte at a time. We'll distribute our two to get rid of our parentheses. Two times x minus, because of the negative in between, two times four is eight is greater than 11. So I just copied my greater than symbol. Now it's like a two-step equation where I add 8 to both sides. When we add 8 to both sides, 2x is greater than 19. Uh-oh. When I divide both sides by a positive 2, x is greater than 19 halves, which is... Um, nine and a half. Nineteen halves. X is greater than nine and a half. I made it a mixed number um, just because it made it easier for me to think this through because the next the next uh, item of business is to check. And in order to check I needed to realize exactly what I'm working with here. So I need to pick a number when it's an inequality I divided by a positive so I kept my greater than sign consistent all the way through. I need to pick a number that's greater than nine and a half, not equal to, greater than. So how about 10? 10 is greater than nine and a half. So I'm gonna take 10 and plug that in and see if it works. So two times 10 minus four. I'm checking to see if that's greater than 11. So I'm gonna take care of my parentheses first. 10 minus four is six and I'm already thinking of the answer. Whoops, that's 11. 2 times 6 is 12, and 12 is greater than 11, so it does check out. All right, so that's um, comparing an equation to an inequality. And now we're going to look at a multi-step equation, an equation that's going to require more than just two steps. Um, and how do we eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So I'm going to take care of just this first half of my equation and take care of my 6. Distribute 6 to x minus 6 times 2 is 12. Copy my equal sign. Now I'm going to distribute my 2. 2 times 2 is 4x. 
2 times 8 is 16. Now, this is where in class I've told you to think of it as having like a little war between the x's and the numbers without x. We're declaring war. We're going to get all the x's to one side. I'm going to make a game plan. I would like to keep x positive because sometimes when I have a negative x, I forget to take care of my negative sign. So if I subtract 4x from both sides, I will keep my x positive. And that'll give me a positive 2x minus 12 equals 16. Now, if we're declaring war between the x's and the numbers that don't have x, that means 12 is on the wrong side. Excuse me, my puppies are uh, seeing something out the window. All right, so 2x equals, and we've canceled out our 12, and we're going to say 16 plus 12, which gives us 28. And that's easy enough right there. We have to undo multiplication by dividing by 2. And x equals 14. At least I think it does. Let's check and see if we agree that x equals 14. So draw a line here. Over here is where we're going to do our check on this side. So I'm going to say in place of x, let's plug in 14 because it's an equation. It was equal to 14. 14 minus 2 equals 2 times 2 times 14 plus 8. So here we go. 6 times 12 equals 2 times uh, 14 is 28 plus 8. So I have 6 times 12, which is um, 72. So I'm going to check to see if I get 72 on this other side. 2 times 8 and 8 is 16, 36, and 2 times 36, cha-ching, I did get 72. It checks out. So x is equal to 14. That is my answer to that great big equation that I just one bite at a time took care of. All right, here's a word problem. The Carlton Company, they budgeted $18.25 for um, a banquet. I already know that if that's what they budgeted, $18.25, whatever is going to take place over here needs to be less than or equal to $18.25 because that's what they have in their budget. So let's read the rest of the problem. The cost of the facility is $225. So to rent the banquet hall, it's going to be $225. How much can the company spend per guest on food? Food is our question here. How much per guest on food if there is also a $3 charge per guest for linens? So they're already spending $2.25 to rent the hall. They're already going to have to spend $3 per guest for linens. Oh, and there are 80 guests expected to come. They're having 80 guests. So we know that we have the cost of renting the place, $3 per guest for the linens, and we're checking to see how much money can we spend on food, food cost, if we already know there's 80 guests. So F is my variable that I'm going to label for food cost. All right. The cost of the banquet hall, the cost of linens, and this will be the cost per person for food. I'm solving for F, and we know that everything needs to stay less than or equal to 1825. So, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. So, I'm going to start with taking care of 3 times 80, which is 240. I'm going to rewrite this as 80F. That way it looks like um, the equations that we're used to looking at. So 225 plus 240 gives us 465 plus 80F. Oh, I kept forgetting to write less than or equal to 1825. Less than or equal to 1825. So now I'm ready to isolate my F. So subtract 465 from both sides. I'm subtracting, not multiplying or dividing. Subtraction is 
not any cause for alarm, subtracting, not multiplying or dividing. And 1825 minus 465 gives me um, 1360, if I did my math correct. And I'm going to divide both sides by 80. And F, the amount, the cost of food should be less than or equal to 17. So they can spend at most $17 per person. So the way you would write that answer is uh, at most $17 can be the cost of food per person. If they spend any more than $17, they're gonna go over their budget. All right, let's look at the next example, example four. It says solve and graph your solution on a number line. All right, so first I need to solve my equation. So I am going to leave my five X minus nine where it is, and I need to take care of my parentheses. So I copy everything just like it is and distribute my two, two times x, and then two times six, which is 12. Now I have x's on both sides. I need to sort of pick sides, who, which side is x gonna go on? I like to keep my x positive, that's just me. So I'm gonna subtract two x from both sides to try to keep my x positive, because when I have to divide by negative, that's when it gets tricky. And I'm going to copy everything else just as it is. Brought down my negative 9. Brought down my 12. Now, since x is on the left, I need to take 9 to the other side. When we take 9 to the other side, 3x stays over there, greater than or equal to 21. And now to get x by itself, I'll divide by 3. And x looks like it's going to be greater than or equal to 7 but I'm going to check my solution just to be sure. And I'm gonna plug in five times, oops, my color didn't change. Five times seven minus nine should be greater than or equal to two times seven plus six. So five times seven is 35 minus nine should be greater than or equal to two times 13, so that's going to give me 26, and 35 minus 9 gives me 26. How about that? They turned out to be equal to, and that is an option. It can be greater than or equal to, so um, 7 shows that it was equal to. If I'd picked a number greater than 7, which probably is what I should have picked, like 8, 8 times 5 is 40. Let's do that one just real quick in our heads. That would give us 40 if I plugged in 8. Is that greater than or equal to 2 times 8 plus 6? <clears throat> so 2 times 14. Is that greater than or equal to 40 minus 9? So 31 should be greater than... 28 and it is so it checks out so any way you slice it x should be greater than or equal to 7 Okay, I'm sorry. I was late getting this video posted. I'm sorry. It's a little bit long, but I hope that you find our um, Eating one bite at a time of our elephant to be helpful and I hope you'll have a great rest of the day. Thanks